Hello everyone. In this lesson, we are going to learn about vectors as one of the data structures in R. The five basic data structures in R include vectors, lists, matrices, arrays, and data frames. So by the end of this very lesson, you will learn how to create vectors and assign multiple values to objects in R. A vector is a collection of objects of the same data type. You can create a vector using the C function. The C actually means concatenate or combine. And I like to use the term combine, which is much more intuitive. So let us go to R and demonstrate how to create vectors. Now, recall earlier on that we learned about how to assign values to variables. So for example, I would like to assign the value 60 to the variable called x. And if I go ahead and execute this line of code, we see that the assignment has been made and that is displayed in the environment window. However, if you want to assign multiple values like say 78, 100, all these three numbers, you want to save them into the variable called x, then you would have to combine these numbers using the C function and that assignment can be made. Without the C function, if you go ahead and execute this, you will simply get an error thrown to you. So all you have to do is just simply go ahead and wrap this with the C function and execute this code and that assignment will have been made. So now X as an object or variable created in R has all these three numbers. In the environment window, we see that we have the three numbers on the right hand side and the variable X on the left hand side. Now to the immediate left of the numbers, you can see NUM which simply is short for numeric. That simply tells you that the numbers that are found in this particular vector are of the numeric data type. The square bracket with the number one colon three actually is giving you an idea about how many items we have in this particular vector, which means we have numbers ranging from one to three. So this is how you can create a vector in R. Now, earlier on, we observed that a vector is a collection of elements of the same data type. We learned about five basic data types in R. So let's go ahead and create vectors of each particular data type. So we are going to start with the numeric data type. So if we want to create a vector containing numeric data type, then let's create a variable or object called numeric underscore vector and initiate my C function and in there pass my numbers which are of the numeric data type and go ahead and execute this and we see that that assignment has been made. If I resize the environment window, we can see fully the name of the variable which we have created, numeric vector, which has NUM as a numeric data type and we have four numbers that we have created and the numbers are displayed on the right. So let's resize the window and go ahead with our code. So if I print this numeric vector, we see that the numbers are stored right in there. If you recall, we use the class function to check what data type an object belongs. We can do the same thing for vectors. So here, I just simply pass numeric vector variable that we have created into the class function, execute, and we get the answer to be numeric. We can create another vector of integer data type, and I would like to call it integer underscore vector and use the C function and in there, I will pass a set of numbers which are positive or negative whole numbers with the suffix L. And if I execute this, that assignment also has been made. In the environment window, we see that the INT is short for integer data type and there are three numbers inside of this vector. So if I go ahead and use the class function and pass into it, the variable which I've created and run this, we end up getting the integer data type. You can also print this particular vector to the console to see what is displayed in there. We can also create a vector of the character data type. And I would like to add these characters, R programmer, R studio, and simply execute this line of code. In the environment window, that is also displayed in there with the data type CHR representing the character data type. So if I go ahead and pass this variable that we have created into the class function, 
we can check what data type these values that are in the vector are. So we see that that belongs to the character data type. Then we can create the vector of the logical data type. And we have true, we have false, we have NA. So if I go ahead and execute this, then we can also see that we have the LOGI, which stands for logical data type, containing these three values. And if I check the data type, then we see that that also belongs to the logical data type. And if I go ahead and print it to the console, then we can see the values that are stored in there. The last data type is complex data type. And I would like to create a variable called complex vector. And in there, I will pass into it numbers with a suffix i. So I can do something like this. And if I execute, we can also see that we have CPLS, which stands for complex data type in the environment window. And if I pass this into the class function, we can see that the data type it belongs is the complex data type. Let's print it to the console to see how that also looks like. So this is how you can create vectors of the various data types. Now, what happens if you decide to mix up the data types? So for example, I would like to create a vector, and this time I would name it as vec underscore one. And I will add all the various data types in there. So 67 of the numeric data type, 89L of the integer data type. Let's add R studio as the character data type, then true as a logical data type, and then 56 plus 100i as the complex data type. If I run this code, it doesn't throw an error. The assignment has been made, and we can see it right in the environment window. So we do have the vec underscore one, which is of the character data type. So you see what happens. Even though we have all the five basic data types inside of this particular vector, when we print this object, only the character data type is retained for each of the values that is stored in this vector. If we use the class function and pass into it the vec underscore one, we see that all of these that are in this vector happens to be a character data type. So what happened? Well, in my opinion, I would say that the strongest data type takes over whenever you mix up the data types. So strive as much as possible to create vectors of the same data type. Let's look at another example. So if I create another vector called vec2, and in there, I pass in the logical constants true, false, and a number 45. So now we have the logical data types and we have the numeric data type. If I execute this and I print this, you can see that the logical data types have been coerced to numeric data types, one and zero. So if I go ahead and check the class of vec underscore two, then we also get numeric data type. So go ahead and create vectors of the same data type and do not be mixing up the data types. And that is how vectors were created in R4 for the purpose of storing homogeneous or the same data types. So let's create a variable called named underscore vector and let's demonstrate how to create named vectors in R. So we write our C function and in there, let me pass in some numbers like 1,800, 200. Now, what I am essentially doing here is that I would like to store this single number in that vector to a particular variable within the C function itself. And the way to do this is just simply write the name of the variable. I would like to call it revenue and say equal to 1,000. And for the second number, I will also write something like cost equal to 800. And for the third one, profit will do. So what I'm essentially doing is that each numeric data type, each number that is in this particular vector is being assigned a variable in it. Now you realize that in R, there were two assignment operators. We had the less than hyphen symbols and then we had the equal sign for the assignment. Now my advice to make it very simple for you is that if you are making any object or variable assignment, the main assignment, simply use the less than hyphen. And this is what you'll be seeing our programmers use most often. But if you are inside of a function and you want to make any particular assignment, then use the equal sign. 
So these are the two distinctive ways of using the two assignment operators. So in this case, if I run this line of code and print the named vector, we can see that each value is being assigned its own variable, which is found at the very top of that value. So this is how you can get to create a named vector. We normally do this in order to make the values that are inside of the vector much more intuitive and make some sort of meaning. Another way to also create a vector is to use the colon symbol to create sequences of numbers. Like for example, if you write one colon 10, what we're essentially doing is to create a vector from one to 10. If I run this code, you can see that we have the numbers one, two, three, all the way up to 10. So the colon symbol is used to create sequences of numbers. So let us create a variable called SEQ vector. SEQ simply is short for sequence. And I would like to use the colon symbol to create sequence of numbers from 45 to 100, execute this line of code and print the SEQ underscore vector. And we simply get the numbers from 45 all the way to 100. There is something that I want to explain to you right here. All along, you see that anytime we execute a code with the exception of the name vector here, we normally find the number one inside of the square bracket displayed on the left-hand side of the output. So what this actually is essentially doing is counting or giving you a count of the items that are found in that vector. For example, this number to the immediate right of this square bracket simply is telling you that that is the first number in this vector. You see how after printing the sequence vector variable, we end up seeing one in the square bracket, 16 in the square bracket, 31 and 46. What this is essentially saying is that the number 45 here happens to be the first item in this vector. The number 60 here is the 16th item. The number 75 is the 31st item and 90 is the 46th item. So for example, if I wanted to know how many items are in this vector, I can just simply start counting from here. This is 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, and so on. However, there is a function in R for checking how many items that are stored in a vector or any other data structure for that matter. That function is called the length function. So it takes in a simple argument called x. What this means is that just simply pass into it the particular data structure for whose length of items you really want to count. So here, I will just go ahead and pass the sequence vector that I've created, simply execute, and we end up getting the result to be 56. So this tells you that there are 56 numbers inside of this sequence of numbers. So use the length function to check how many items are found in a vector or in other data structure for that matter. So this is how you can create vectors in R.